he turns me around, pushes me against the car, and frisks me down. That is not a misunderstanding. That is a violation. Man. Man. Like, we're here to help y'all, man. Rated at all times with everything asked of him. He followed all procedures. He acted in a cool and professional manner throughout. Uh, he was prepared to cooperate. And Making a right on Tampa, mm -hmm. right? That light there is very small, and you made the right-hand turn. Okay, so that's what I'm stopping. You mean the angled light? Yes, sir. It was great. Secret Service agents are trained to operate with precision and discretion. But what happens when their covert operations are misinterpreted by local law enforcement? From misunderstandings at traffic stops to full-blown arrests, Two secret agents find themselves in trouble when a 16-year-old male calls the police, claiming the agent harassed him and continued to question him. The teenager alleges that the agent came to his home. That man came up to me and frisked me. Okay, okay. And frisked me. I told him I was 16 years old. He continued to question me. They tried to go into my house, and he just would not leave me alone. He came up to me more. That man right there, yes. Let's walk across. We'll talk over here, and uh, we'll let these guys talk with these guys here. See what we can figure out. I told you hey. I was a minor. Okay. And that girl. Relax. That girl. Relax. Relax. Did they ID themselves at all? No, they, they didn't right until after I said it's illegal for them to frisk me. And then he wanted to be like, oh, I work for this place. Like, that's illegal. You cannot pat me down. He says he's a resident, which is fine. But we're sitting in a car, and he can buy with a bag, which is fine. But then, like, he made a signal to us. And I thought he was, like, threatening violence. Right, so right. I went down. And I just said, hey, I, do you have any weapons on you? Police. So I, I just gave him a quick pat down. Okay. So he's getting all indignant about it. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. you know, he says he's a minor. That's fine. Okay. It's not like minors can't have guns. Right, right, right. right. Yep. The police arrived promptly and attempted to resolve the issue, calming the young man down. They listened to his concerns, clarified the secret agent's role and intentions, and worked to find a resolution that would work for everyone involved. The agents were trying to explain that they hadn't forced their way in. Do you have uh, an ID that's not your not your badge? No. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to show you my driver's license. I mean... Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's a bit of an immature kind of a driver. Yeah. Oh, you brought all these people up to this? What did it, well, what the, the first call was that someone was breaking into the house. Just the call that we said uh, we got was somebody was forcing Andrew into the house. Were you guys just knocking on the door? Yeah, we were just knocking on the door. Yeah, we were just knocking on the door. Okay, okay, hey, we're here to figure out what's okay. going on, all right? Okay, yeah. All we, we know is what people tell door. us on the phone. We are just knocking on the door. Okay, like we I said, all we know... We are not going to go in. Okay. We are not going to go in to someone's house. What's the issue? They're saying that we are trying to go No, in. hey, that's not what I'm saying. No, I'm that's saying what that the, the call guys. came call, in call, saying that that's what happened, which is why there's so many of us here we got here so quick okay so i'm gonna go talk to them figure out what's going on with their side of the story okay then everybody should be able to get out of here, out of here okay the officers attempted to calmly resolve the situation however the teen seemed unwilling to listen refusing to accept their explanation and continuing to escalate the situation hey, okay so it sounds like this is just a big misunderstanding no, it's not a misunderstanding it is a misunderstanding how is this okay because they're federal law enforcement officers, okay? They, and they said they were just knocking on the door. No, they weren't. They weren't. They have been here for two hours. My mother's boyfriend was home. They, they've been here for two hours trying to get into the house. I got here. I go in my house. I go out of my house. He decides to walk up to my vehicle, not my vehicle, my friend's vehicle, and say that I threatened him. He turns me around, pushes me against the car, and frisks me down. That is not a misunderstanding. That is a violation. Man. Man. Like... We're here to help y'all, man. The street man, us, really isn't get you anywhere with us, okay? Like, we're just here to figure out what's going on. That's all. I'm not, like, we're not, we're not here with them. I don't. We're not there doing anything that they're doing. I don't. But like, I don't know where I can say. The agents were trying to provide a clear understanding of what happened, including the teenager's behavior towards them. I didn't know what he mouthed at us, and he just gave us this like this, what the hell look. And so, of course, we're gonna confront and say, hey, what's the what's the deal? And then he the other guy got, walks off. He's trying to say that he got frisked because he's a minor. I said, I can't tell whether you're black. I have no idea what race you yeah, are. Yeah, you know, it's right. not. It's not. I mean, I would have done the same thing. I would have just been yeah, like, yeah, hey, dude, I don't know where you're coming from. I, it sounds like this is a big misunderstanding because they live here. They had no idea who the hell you guys were because you're dressed like normal people, which is fine. Um, so they were just a little taken aback that there were people trying to get into the apartment that they live in. So. 
Well, yeah, I would so be I too know. if I showed up to my house and there were people trying well, to, we had totally like, at my door. Him. Okay, but I mean, even but he then, left. But he left. You, yeah. even then, I would still, I would still be freaking out a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. The situation was resolved peacefully, but the female agent expressed her concern that many young people today lack respect for authority. Meanwhile, the teenager continued to make unsubstantiated claims, accusing a random white male of harassing him. See, this is the problem with our youth of today. They have no respect for law enforcement. You know what? You're 16 years old. You have no rights until you're 18. He is not a person of color. I have to think about it mm -hmm. as a fact that a random white male mm -hmm. comes up to you. Why does it matter that he's white? Because I'm a person of color. Hey, what if he's a black a federal officer of... and did the same thing to you? It still would have been a problem. Okay. But the thing is, but you're, when you're, a inject, you're injecting no. race in a situation where racism has been involved. Yes, involved. because when a random white person walks up to you and you're a person of color and they just push you against a car racing. without an explanation, you would be in the same position racing. that I am That's in. Why you know what I mean? Right because that is why I'm frustrated, because the okay. fact that he didn't give me any sort of explanation and pushed me against a vehicle, and okay. then still didn't give me an explanation until I said I'm a minor and this is illegal. And then he was like, no, it's not. Here's my badge. Like screaming at me and like and making it about race. I'm not making it about race. I'm making no, it about the fact. You definitely are. You're, you're objecting race in this whole thing. I'm not saying what he did is right, okay. but the whole thing you're yelling, he's white and you're and you're a person yes. of color. That, that's your I whole that's color. your whole basis yes, of this man. And he's a random person okay. that came up to me. Okay. If a random... You asked for a description, right? You asked me to say he was white, right? I didn't ask for so a description I gave that from you. you. So here's the deal. This you're is just a big misunderstanding. Okay. They're gonna leave. I'm not, I'm not guys. Just as the police were about to leave, the teenager requested to take his complaint to the agent's superiors. He asked the officers for the agent's departmental information, and they replied that he could easily find it online. It seemed the teenager was determined to pursue his grievances. It seems like the teenager was still unhappy with the outcome and wanted to escalate the matter further. I'm not going to walk away from this, but that's just a misunderstanding. Then what would, are you going to do? I would like, I want you to wait for my grandmother to get here so that... She I'm can. not going to do that okay. because this is a misunderstanding. They operate by different rules. That, that they do. operate under different okay. rules, but that's yes, still they illegal. Do. Okay. How, well, if you not for them. Do listen, it. if you want to take it up with their bosses. Okay, that's, I do. That's, that's what I asked. I asked for their boss. Did I, don't, I not? We don't know who their boss is. So how am I supposed to find that if you won't let me walk over there? Use the internet. Call the local social security office. Secret like, service office. Secret service office. Whatever. Because okay. I know that number. Use the internet. It's on the internet. Look it up. Okay. It's the same thing that I would do to get it for you. Okay. okay, so just don't come back here. They're gonna leave. This is my house. Just How get out of here for a little bit, here? okay? Nana! I live there. Nana! Nana! This case had a calm ending, but this next one did not. Before we dive into that one, take a second to like this video and turn on your bell notifications to see many more such videos. Now, moving on. Another secret agent found himself in a challenging situation after he was taken off the plane. Being taken off a plane can be a serious matter, especially if it's related to their official duties. The Secret Service agent then filed a lawsuit claiming employment discrimination. The agent then seeks legal recourse, alleging that they were unfairly treated and disciplined due to to their nationality. I am the managing director of Relman and Associates, a civil rights law firm. Okay, why don't we get started? Uh, the director of Relman and an associate from a civil rights law firm have come forward in support of the Secret Service agent, stating that the agent professionally conducted himself throughout the incident. Furthermore, they claimed that the agent had all the necessary identification and credentials, including their badge and IDs, to prove their status as a Secret Service agent. The key points about what we believe happened center on the fact that this Secret Service agent was traveling um, with his Secret Service identification, with his badge, and with his photo ID. Uh, he cooperated at all times with everything asked of him. He followed all procedures. He acted in a cool and professional manner throughout. Uh, he was prepared to cooperate and provide the relevant and Secret Service agents who have sued the Secret Service for employment discrimination, uh, discrimination in the only reason why he wasn't allowed on that plane was because we believe, and he believes, 
he is an American of Arab descent, pure and simple. The agent's legal representatives argued that the agent did nothing wrong and that he was treated unfairly despite having properly identified himself as a Secret Service agent. The agent's legal team believed that the real reason he was removed from the plane was because he was a Secret Service agent of Arab descent and that this constituted a case of discrimination. They argue that his professional manner and proper identification should have been sufficient to allow him to board the plane and that his removal was motivated by bias rather than any legitimate security concern. The agent's lawyer alleged that the incident was a case of racial or ethnic profiling and that the agent was targeted because of his racial background. This is a serious allegation and if proven, could have significant implications for the airline and the Secret Service. The director stated that it's straightforward to verify the identity of Secret Service agents, given their small numbers. He later argued that the pilot's account was not credible, as they would have easily been able to confirm the agent's identity and credentials, which would have resolved the situation quickly. In other words, the director is saying that the pilot's excuse for removing the agent from the plane doesn't hold water as it would have been simple to verify the agent's identity and clear up any confusion. This suggests that the director believes the pilot's actions were unjustified and potentially motivated by bias, hence something needed to be done. This is a case of discrimination. No, he, this individual doesn't expect to decide. Um, this We're dealing with an individual whose identity is about the easiest to verify of any position held in government. There are very, very few Secret Service agents. There are very few at the elite level of this individual agent. There are only a handful of agents whose job it is to guard the President of the United States. This can be verified with a call. Everybody in this room makes calls all the time to verify someone's identity. You get that information in minutes. That could have been done here. The pilot's account is not credible. Okay, thank you very much for coming. In a jaw-dropping display of incompetence, the police somehow managed to stop and arrest the head of internal affairs, the one person they should have known better than to mess with. It's a staggering example of bureaucratic blundering and a testament to the fact that even law enforcement can sometimes be utterly clueless. The head of internal affairs was pulled over for a minor traffic violation, for making a right turn in Tampa, and also for having a green arrow light. The police's failure to recognize the head of internal affairs is a cringe-worthy mistake that will undoubtedly have repercussions. You can't make this kind of dumb up. What's going on, boss? Also, Mariano, Atlanta Police. Way back there, when you're leaving that residential area right there on Temple. I did what now? You're making a right on Temple, mm -hmm. right? That light there is very small, and you made the right hand turn. Okay, so that's what I'm stopping you. You mean the angled light? Yes, sir. It was green. It, so, even though at that angle, that's for the other way. And I, people always get that confused, <clears throat> but it's a small light. All right, so, and that's for the opposite direction, okay? For traffic, where, there's kind of where I understand that. Do you actually something about your checkbooks? The head of internal affairs was pulled over and handed over his license to the officer, whose eyes scanned it intently. He was asked if he was carrying a gun, and his response was met with a nod before he was told to wait in his car while the officer returned to their own vehicle. The second officer seemed to recognize him and downplayed the situation, saying, not a big deal. The officer's friendly banter and warm smiles put him at ease, and he was ultimately let off with a warning, the tension dissipating like mist in the morning sun. <laughs> Any guns weapons in the car, boss? Excuse me? Any guns weapons in the car? You still staying in Winter Garden? Okay, perfect. Hey, you got any guns weapons on you, boss? Uh, I, I just asked. I er, it's Florida. Everybody got a gun. Yeah. All right, all right. Y'all stay in the car for me. How you guys doing? Good. Moving? Uh, yeah. yeah okay. Bit, yeah. yeah, you guys went through that, that red light there. Yeah. Red. Tampa. What, what are you I, I, I saw it. Kind of I, I, That's a very strange intersection. Yeah, I, I, I've seen multiple people run run through that one before. Um, not a huge deal. It's not a pedestrian traffic. Bunch of cars going through there. So, yes, sir, I recognize you. No, I know who you are. As soon as, as soon as the window rolled down and I can see your face, I know who you are. How you guys doing today? Okay. I hope this rain hasn't affected the uh, the move. All right, Mr. Rivers, I appreciate your time. Okay. I'm not really a big traffic guy. I'm like a guns and drugs and stolen kids kind of guy. You know you got none of that in your back truck. Cool. Just for so you appreciate your night. We'll go out of there, all right? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, have a good day.
A special agent Alexis Hatton called the police officer's personal cell phone, likely for work-related purposes. But the conversation took a sour turn when the agent asked the officer to turn off their body camera and hinted that he would be speaking with others about the incident, potentially implying that he would be reporting the officer's conduct to their superiors or others in a position of authority. Agent Alexis Hatton had scheduled an interview with Deputy Ralph Gordon to discuss a traffic ticket, but the meeting didn't go as planned. The conversation apparently took a sour turn, and the two officials failed to see eye to eye on the matter. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. That'll work. Did you run your body cam? I, I am now, because I don't know how legit you are at the moment. It's okay. Special agent Hatton. The FBI. Okay. You got that on body cam? I do, but I don't understand what the problem is with you meet me at the office. I'll talk to the U.S. Attorney's Office about it. You can cut off the reporting device now. Okay. Well, I will when I leave the area, sir. Despite Agent Hatton identifying himself earlier, the officer remained skeptical and didn't believe him. The officer even called his supervisor to report that the agent had a radio and credentials, but still didn't accept his identity. The agent then asked the officer if he was being detained, and the officer replied that the agent was the one who had called him in the first place. This raises the question of why the agent would call the officer, possibly for work-related reasons, and didn't want to discuss it with the camera recording the conversation. It seems like there's more to the story than what initially meets the eye, and there there may be some underlying context or motivations that haven't been revealed yet. The agent's decision to call the officer and then not want to discuss it on camera suggests that there may be some sensitive or confidential information involved. This guy is uh, telling me to turn my body camera off and telling me he's going to contact other people to get involved with this. Let me get his tag number real quick. He says he does not give out business cards. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe this. Uh, there's something fishy with this right here. He's got a radio and he's got credentials. Uh, 33, go ahead. Yeah, he told me to turn my body camera off because he, he didn't want that running. And uh, so now he's no, he's still here. He's looking at me. Franklin 33, that 4 to 28, Lincoln, Kilo, Sierra, Tango, 5 7. She was played on 2015. Absolutely four, not. Four door, still now he's dark saying, blue in color. Now he's saying I'm trying to detain him. I've never, I've never told you I was detaining you. That's on camera Hill. that you are staying you know, here willingly, sir. 30 of 20, 54 and 29 is on that vehicle. Franklin, does that come back to any government agency? This is easy to come by. It just advises Advanced Wiring Company. Do you work for a Doesn't wiring company? Further. It's a covert agent, sir. Okay. I do feel like I'm being detained. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, sir. How yeah. did you get my phone number? I can't get that information. I ain't saying he can't tell me how he got my information. Hey. You are detained at this time, sir. The standoff continued for an extended period, with the officer refusing to back down despite the agent's repeated identification. The officer later claimed that he hadn't seen the agent's ID, and the agent showed it to him. The agent's attempts to clarify his identity were met with doubt, and the officer remained unconvinced, prolonging the tense situation. Yeah. permission to take it off? No, you don't have to. Okay, sure take it. just hang tight right here. I'm not cuffing you. I'm not cuffing you. But you're being very uncooperative with me. I, you asked me to come up here. You called my personal cell phone number. You, do, you can't tell me how you got it. Your vehicle is coming back to a wiring company, not the it's FBI. A covert vehicle. Okay. You Dude, get would mad. Would you like to see some registration? You get mad at me would because you, I turned my body like camera to, on. Would you like to see some registration? And you know a lot of stuff about me. Would you like to see the registration, sir? I, I don't really want anything from you at this point. My supervisor's on the way. Excellent. You have identification? I surely do. I showed it to him. I, Would you like to see it, sir? That's fine. You don't have to keep your hands up. I'm just I trying to figure out what's going on. I don't want to be shot out here. I don't want to be shot either. I'm going to call my office. 
Yes, sir. As the situation unfolded, Agent Hatton managed to call his FBI supervisor to report the events as they were happening. He briefed the supervisor on the traffic stop, the officer's doubts, and his subsequent detention, despite identifying himself as a federal agent. The supervisor likely dispatched additional resources or support, given the agent's distress and the escalating situation. On the other hand, the cop claimed he hadn't seen the agent's badge and it was given to him, but he was still unconvinced. I never asked for your weapon, sir. You told me you had one on you. You said you wanted to take it off of me, didn't you, sir? I asked oh, you for permission yeah, once yeah. you said that you had one. Yes, I never asked you. Uh, right. So anyway, Larry, so, uh, so the deputy gets out of the car, goes to the car, gets in it, and I guess he calls his supervisor. His supervisor says that this is not the place to interview him, that I have to arrange for your office to talk to him at his office. That's fine. I said I'll contact the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the U.S. Attorney's Office will be in contact with me. So I hooked up, and uh, like I say, uh, I'm not sure what's going on behind the scenes, but I he told, did you tell, did you tell your sergeant that I was here about a ticket that you had issued? I told him that you were here to investigate me about an issue, and he said this needed to be handled through the office, not on the side of the road. And you said, that. and you yeah, said that. That that wasn't going to happen. You were going to contact somebody else. I was going to contact the U.S. Attorney's Office. That's okay. correct. Yeah. And then we're just trying to check your validity. You you are you called a deputy sheriff's personal cell phone. You can't tell me how you got the number. That's right. Your tag's not coming back to the FBI. Correct. Okay. I haven't seen a badge. I've seen an ID card. I haven't seen a badge. You have not seen. No, sir. Okay. I haven't seen a badge. I've seen an ID card. Well, I this to you. Did you grab it? Take it out of my hand. Do you not see a badge? I see a badge now. That's the first time I saw oh, the badge, Lord. sir. Well, you don't need to be a deputy. I saw this. He kept opening this. Yeah. That's part okay. of my badge and my okay. credentials. That's very professional you to say that statement. But anyway, uh, that I, I was very observant to be a deputy. Because you never showed me that. You showed me the inside of it, uh, but not the badge. Are you hearing all this, Larry? Oh, everybody's going to hear all this, sir. The situation took a dramatic turn when the officer discovered that Agent Hatton's name was on the terrorist watch list. The agent was promptly handcuffed and asked what charges he was facing. The officers replied that they didn't have any specific charges yet, but were detaining him for their own security due to his name being on the watch list and not being matched in the FBI database. This unexpected twist raised more questions than answers, leaving the agent in a precarious and uncertain situation. Uh, you're all right. We're just trying to figure out what's going on with this gentleman we're starting out with. Okay, uh, your dispatch just sent me through here. Uh, I think I might have got the guy's name wrong. Is his name Alexis? Like, yes. Yes. A L E X I M? Yes. Hat. H A T T E N. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But there's somebody talking back to him on that radio. Right now we're running sir. you through multiple federal databases. Yeah. Okay, nobody's coming up with your name. You also coming back on a terror watch list. So we're gonna secure you for our protection and yours. We're gonna put you in the back of the police. Where, where's that weapon at, sir? It's on, it's right on my side. right side. Buddy. You got any other weapons on you, sir? Uh, no, just my wallet. All right, just gonna patch it down sure, real quick. Go ahead. But if somebody pulls your name up, brother, yeah, we're just trying to verify you. You don't want to give us no info for nobody to contact. The agent was placed in the police car, where he continually complained that he couldn't breathe. After the officers finally verified his identity and realized their mistake, they released him from custody. However, the ordeal had already taken a toll on the agent's health. As he exited the vehicle, he struggled to breathe and showed visible signs of heat stroke. And that jacket. 10-14, he's on the transfer, please, sir. 
33 Franklin. We've, we've uh, detained this. Where you want to meet me at? And he goes, uh, he says, uh, I think it's the new substation. I said the new, the new police department. He goes, yeah, one. You know, he wasn't real sure. I'm like, okay. So I went down there. I, uh, he had just called me and like, hey man, what's up? I said, I gotta go meet this guy. He's investigating something. Yes, sir. There, okay, okay. All right, I'm turning it on right brother, now. Open the door. I can't breathe. Sir, I can't open the door. You're brother. being detained right now. 26 Franklin, 1065, zero number. Yeah, I'm going I got the air on full blast, sir. Six to what did that gentleman's name you got detained? Don't got the heat. It ain't the heat. Two, one, one. What's up? You haven't cooperated with anyone. What's that gentleman's name you got detained? It's gonna be Alexis Hatton. Alexis Hatton. Absolutely, it ain't going off. I had the defroster on. No, you did Brother, I need air. God almighty. 533. I know you think this is funny, but it won't be funny after the day. 33, go ahead. The paramedics were summoned, and he was rushed to the hospital for medical attention, a stark contrast to the initial traffic stop that had escalated into a tense and dangerous situation. Thankfully, he received prompt medical attention, but the incident highlights the importance of proper communication, verification, and care in high-pressure situations. When he told me that, right away, you, you don't go on official business, so y'all can let him go, so they don't go about his way. Yeah. Ten-four. All right, sir. Call 911. Call, I need a medical attention right now. Call, call 911. Call 911. We're, we're releasing you right no, now, call sir. Call 911 now. Call 911. I need 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. They're begging you to cut off your fucking We're, we're He's requested EMS to respond at this time. Franklin, the 33, can you give me an exact address? We're at the We're new, at the new substation for the sheriff's office, Franklin. Jacksonville, I need 911. I've asked for help. I've been in the car. They had me smoking in the back. 10 4, can you advise if it's next door to the new dollar store? That's 10 4. Can you verify that my AC's on real quick, John? It's on now. It was on when, how could I not touch, how could I touch it? Yeah, it's on. Yeah. 911, I asked for the sheriff's to call 911. They won't, they won't call him back. Made to uh, detain him while we were checking his legitimacy. Yeah. And uh, we put him in the back. And uh, after that, he started complaining of uh, shortness of breath, vision loss, uh, and whatever else he's got going on. That's and that's that's so. And he claims I had the heat on in the car. No. Uh, but okay. I don't. Where uh, where you want to go? Or that last? Make sure I got his. Yes. I don't know what to talk about. In a surprising turn of events, the Secret Service agents encountered a man with a gun, but instead of escalating the situation, they struck up a friendly conversation. The man revealed that he had a six-foot-tall friend who was on his way to meet him, and the agents showed no signs of alarm. Despite being armed, the man seemed harmless, and the agents continued to chat with him as if they had known him for years, putting aside their initial caution for a moment of unexpected companionship. Is that a real gun? Just a cane looking gun? Just a cane. 
the other guns are real, but that's why I'm on this side of the road. Okay, so you got other, you got, <laughs> other you got loaded gun? Yeah, so I got two gun. gun there, and what else do you have? On the belt. Okay, you got legal to carry yes, I am. sealed and everything? Yes, I am. You're from Sheboygan? Yes, I am. My daughter's over there, so I'm just walking back and forth here right now. Okay. So. Are you going I'll, to the event, or are you just I, well, I can't for... can't go over there. No guns allowed over there. So I'm on this side of the street. Yep. Okay. No, it's perfect. We don't want any problems, but we gotta restrict. Uh, I understand. You know, I understand. Uh, civilians with guns from the from the events. That, well, I ain't going over there. <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah. Not unless there's right. a reason for me to. Did somebody <laughs> talk to you or something or about about being across the street or anything? I know the laws in okay. Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. Well, just check. Can't so. go on school grounds. I can't even drive onto school grounds. Okay. Yeah. Well, appreciate so. you. Did someone else? Uh, Appreciate it. Right, enjoy your My day name's out. Dan. Nice Dan? to meet you. Yep. Well, nice oh. to you. Well, yep. well, you guys be safe. We don't need. So. We don't need all kinds of trouble. <laughs> Are you aware of anybody else uh, armed walking around out here? You got uh, friends a, or family? A, a friend of mine said that he was going to be coming. I have not seen him yet. Okay. And you probably won't miss him. He's like six and a half feet tall, about three hundred pounds. Did <laughs> he hook up with you? I'm kind so of keep. I'm kind of keep my eyes out for okay. him if I see him. Okay. Um, but well, if the, we're out here and we happen to see you with a big tall guy, maybe we'll come make contact. Just say hi, just so we know. Yeah, that's that's fine. I got no problem. Cool. Okay. No need. No need to be jerks about it. Nope. You know. Appreciate that. <laughs> the, uh, from a distance, you know that cane looks real. It, it does look like a real cane, doesn't it? <laughs> Did you make it or buy? I, it? I make them. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I needed a cane to walk, and I was tired of crummy <laughs> looking cans. And it sounds like the agents and the man found common ground and had a pleasant exchange, putting aside any initial tension or suspicion. The fact that the man was armed seemed to be relegated to an afterthought, as the conversation took precedence over any potential threat. Thankfully, this encounter was a breath of fresh air compared to the earlier misunderstandings that led to unnecessary arrests. It's a testament to the power of effective communication and the importance of not jumping to conclusions. The agent's ability to diffuse the situation and build rapport with the man is a credit to their exceptional training and professionalism. Uh, pistol, okay. um, like action pistol, defensive pistol, gotcha. things like that. Um, trying to get into more of like two gun and the three gun competition where you use the rifle, handguns, and uh, okay. uh, rifles and uh, That would be him. Is that, him? <laughs> that would okay. be him. <laughs> is he gonna wear his mask the whole time? Probably not. <laughs> How many cameras you got? You got one up there, one I down got, here? I got two. Well, where's the other gun? Is it the belt buckle? I got the belt buckle, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a little North American arms twenty two short. No kidding. Yeah, a little gut buster. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, well Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people look at that and go, boy, I'd be neat if that was a real gun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd show and tell, but we don't do that. No. <laughs> All right. Well, as long as, uh, you know, I'm glad you, yeah. you explained that to us. Yes. Appreciate yes. it. Enjoy your Appreciate day it. Thank and, you for uh, being kind. And Your and friend is armed too, then? Yes. Okay. Just so we <laughs> Probably know. Probably way more than me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to head you over know that the laws. way. We know the laws. Yes. I think a lot of the public don't know the laws. That's kind so, of the point of why we do what we do. So I'm glad I made contact with you. Yes, I appreciate okay. the talk. You guys, like I said, you guys be safe, all right? Thanks, sir. All right. And just so we know, you're going to primarily just kind of be... Right here, yeah. In, kind of in the area of the school? Yeah. Well, I got away from my daughter, so <laughs> yeah. she's here. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, like I said, be safe, yeah. all right? Be safe. Thank you for watching. The YouTube algorithm thinks you will like this video the best, so watch and find out if it is right.